So dear subscribers and viewers of uh, 365 Basics, I come today again with a message that Christ our basis uh, of salvation, or we can say Christ is the basis of our salvation. That is important for us to understand today. And so I welcome you as we are going to start the Bible together. Uh, let us welcome the Holy Presence of Holy Spirit. Our Heavenly Father, Thank you because this is the world. And Father, I ask you now this moment that you help me to deliver the world as you intended it to be delivered. Let your Holy Spirit take control of my mouth that, Lord, I should not stumble and speak something which is not uplifting someone's soul. So I welcome your Holy Spirit Guide me so that I may be myself transformed as others who are listening are transformed too. In Jesus Christ I pray. Amen. So today we are going to talk uh, from the book of Romans. But uh, I want to encourage you with one thing in the, in the uh, basic principles uh, of interpretation of the Bible. We believe this is the word of God. And uh, the word of God accept each other. So there's a totality of scripture. Or sometimes we say total scripture. Right? So there is totality of scripture. Why some people they find themselves preferring other Bible verses than the other. Some you find are uh, uh, they do like to read New Testament and when they find Old Testament it's, it seems there that it's not good for them. But the, the basic important thing to consider when you're studying the Bible is to find the intention of the scripture and to find what did God want you to understand from that. And if you take that, that's the word of God, and by doing that, you will find the whole Bible does not contradict each other. So let's go. I'm going to read it from the book of Romans chapter 5 from verse 12. The Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men for that have sinned. That is our condition. That by one man, sin, singular, entered into the world and all and death passed upon all men for all have sinned why because we were in one man that is adam and that's according to the book of acts verse chapter 17 verse 26 that he created all nations from one man and so because of this one we find that we all men, we were in Adam. And when he sinned, one sin, we all, we all see we were, we have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world. But sin is not imputed when there's no law. There's no law. What does it mean that the sin was in the world before the law came? And when he talks now about the law, he talks about those laws which are concerned with transgression. Okay? And so there's no, and the sin is not imputed when there's no law. You cannot be counted sinner in the matter of sin, what is committed, when there's no what? Law. I, I think you get me. So now he talks about the sin that's cosmic power. That Jesus Christ came to bear, to bear. The, the book of John, chapter 1, verse 29, he says, John the Baptist said this one, these words, that, Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And if you understand that, you will understand, you find that Jesus Christ did not come to do the law, because the law... Jesus Christ, what he came to deal with was the first one which brought something bad. And so, 
this is, let us keep on studying. Verse 14, just take your Bible. Let us go together. I won't spend more time on this um, because I don't want to use more time. Verse 14, nevertheless, death lined from Adam to Moses even over them that had not sinned at the similitude of Adam's translation. Who is the figure of him that was to come? So death has lined to us all. Verse 15, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one man many be dead, much more the grace of God, the gift of by grace, which is born is by one man, Jesus Christ, as a bonded unto many. We are dying because one man sinned. Why do we consider Adam? Because in him we got sin, and in him we are dying because of him. Okay, because we were in him. And so because of that, why don't we consider this another man? Who came? What did he come to bring? Because of him, we received the gift. As in Adam, we received the consequences of sin. Also in Jesus, we received something better. That's a gift. So these are two men who represent those people who are living now. The first Adam and the second Adam. The first Adam, the one, the second Adam, Jesus Christ. Verse 16 says, And not as it was by one that, one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. Judgment came because of one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offense unto justification. So because of that free gift, many now are counted of what? Of justification. That is something better. So one man has brought something bad, condemnation, death, and all the consequences of sin and effects. But because of one man, many are counted uh, righteous. For if by one man offense, death lend by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall learn, shall reign in the life, in the life by one Jesus Christ. So now by one we receive the abundance of grace. That is the gift which is given. Okay, I believe we are together. And verse 15, 18, the Bible says, Therefore as by, of, by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Therefore as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation. Because of one man, that's Adam, when he allowed this cosmic power, sin to enter into our world, what happened? All people to be born, including himself, Adam, was under condemnation. And so all men were under condemnation that there is no life, there's no one seeks God. If you go to read the book of Romans, chapter 3, from verse 8, so he talks about no one who seeks God. All are sinners. No hope. That's who we are because of one man. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift. Now let me read this slowly, this one. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the righteousness of one, who is righteous? Jesus Christ. Because he's the only person whom God spoke from heaven and gave the testimony that this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And he, he told those three disciples when they were on the Mount of Transfiguration. And he told them, this is my beloved son. Listen unto him. Means he is the one, whatever he tells you is perfect. And therefore, and because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ, of one, the free gift came upon all men. So because of the righteousness of Jesus, the one righteous, then we receive the free gift unto justification of life. Do we have the participation there? No. The first one, we did not participate even in a single thing. We were not there. We didn't do anything. 
and we have received all the effects because of one man, because we were in him. And also there is another man who is righteous, Jesus Christ. And because of his righteousness, we all are given opportunity to get that gift unto justification of life. For as by one man disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of, of one shall many be made righteous. Still there, we have zero percent to do something there. That because of one man who disobeyed, who is that? Adam, the first. And so, we were made sinners. So, we are made sinners by default. It's not a choice. It's there by default. Just like a gravitational force. It is there. You can't go against it. So, by the obedience of one, the other one who came, who obeyed, contrary to the first one, and so we, so we all, we are made righteous. And the Bible says, So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Verse 20, the Bible says, we are, we are starting to get the message here. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. Do you get me? So the law entered that offense might abound, that the offense might be seen bigger because of the law. The law came to show how sinful you are more. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. So when the law comes, the law doesn't come to save you. It comes to show how weak you are. That you are not light with God. The law comes like, like a chemical reaction when you need to put something within it and it changes the color. Okay, And so the law comes to show the true color of the man who you are. I believe you. You are getting me. It's just like a person who is a, who is a who is a fornicator, when you take him to the, to the boys' school, okay, there he may seem to be perfect. But to show him how weak he is, you bring girls. Is when he reacts. So the law came to show that the offense might abound, that now when you, are, you, you seem yourself to be more sinful because of the law, then the offense abounds. So you, you prove that I deserve to go to hell. Do you get me? That's application of the law. So when it comes, it shows that you do not deserve eternal life. And it shows your weakness to the utmost so that you may say, I don't deserve to be saved. I'm a total sinner. And because the sin abound, grace did much more abound. And so grace comes to the extent of Raja covering the sin. Showing that there is opportunity for you sinner that you can get salvation. That sin has lain unto death. Sin has brought you, because of sin, now you are going to death. There is no hope. Even so, mighty grace lain through righteousness unto eternal life. Then the gift of grace, which has been happening because of that one man, Jesus, it reigns unto the eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. So who is the center of this message? Is Jesus. Who are the subjects? And who is an object? So Jesus Christ is the main theme of this message. And we are object that we need to, it's talking about us, that we need to be saved. We are sinners. 
In this, man has participated in zero thing. In zero thing. So I want you to understand this clearly. Because some people have been confused that now what is, what, how the man is saved? In the matter of justification, where you are counted righteous, you receive the righteousness of Jesus Christ free gift. Zero participation on you. Because you did not participate at first to receive the nature that you have, to receive the condemnation that you have, you did not participate. You found yourself a victim. And so, why don't you accept the one who did everything? Why do you have accepted the one? You have accepted that Jesus, uh, that Adam sinned. And because of that, I'm a sinner. So you have accepted without the question. So why don't you accept the one who did everything at the cross? He was righteous. And his righteousness is accounted for you. Why don't you accept that? Now I'm righteous because of the one. If you have managed to accept you are a sinner because of Adam, why don't you accept that I'm righteous because of Jesus Christ? Isn't that clear? So in the issue of justification, man has 0% that he has contributed to end his justification. It's because he is made just. Why? Because of one man, Jesus Christ. As he was made a sinner and he received death and condemnation and judgment because of one man. But the other one who has come has brought the change by bringing the better gift compared to the previous judgment that now through him you can be saved. If you have any question, my friend, just write. Do not, we must read the Bible to make it accept each other parts. I know some people may remain with the question, what's the part of the law? What's obedience and what that? That's what follows. And I beg by God's grace that I may explain even this so that to make the Bible become a total, become accepting each other. Because this is the word of God. We should not interpret it Interpret the Bible to fit what we desire to hear. That's the problem that happened to many Christians and the preachers. That we go to the Bible to convince ourselves that I want to study something. I want to hear what I want to hear. And so I study the Bible having the presumption that I want something. But we should approach the Bible with the teachable spirit and find what it teaches itself. Not on the surface, but on the deeper meaning to find what is the message. What is the message? The message talks about justification. Talks about counted lashes because of one man, Jesus Christ. It doesn't talk with other parts of life. It talks about this right message of we are justified because of one man. And it doesn't go on somewhere else. So if we take that part and you rejoice in that, then we have peace with God. That's according to the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 1. May God bless you. Let us avoid the word of prayer. Father, thank you for your goodness. We believe the word is a life. And Father, I pray that let your Holy Spirit be the one to touch hearts. And let these words that have spoken remain in the heart of somebody and then from that it may bear fruits in jesus name amen remember to share this video subscribe may god bless you amen